There are many great heroes of America, but one of the best known is Benjamin Franklin. He's best known as the only founding father that signed all three documents that freed America from Britain. When Benjamin Franklin was born on January 7, 1706, it went largely unnoticed. He was the eighth of ten children in the Franklin family. His family lived in Boston. He went to the Boston Latin School, which offered the opportunity of a classical education. After the first year, he was the head of the class. Two years later, Josiah Franklin, his father, took him out of Boston Latin School and sent him to a regular school. After he finished school, he worked at his father's candle shop. Benjamin caught works for the candles, filled the dipping molds, and went on errands. When Benjamin turned 12, he was old enough to formally become an apprentice. His brother James had just returned from England to open up his printing shop. Benjamin signed a contract to be an apprentice for James. He swept the floors, kept the fires, and carried messages for his master. He barely did any printing. Benjamin wanted to try writing the New England Courant like his brother, but he would not publish it. So he decided to disguise it by saying it was written by Silent Stallard. When the government found out what was really going on, they threw James in jail for being critical of Benjamin. About 20 years later, he decided to go to New York. He married Deborah Reed, had a daughter, Frances Fogel Franklin, that died when she was four. But Sally Franklin, born in 1743, would promise to be a more lasting addition to the family. Benjamin opened up his own shop next to his printing business that sold stationery supplies and other items related to printing. Nobody was more practical than Benjamin Franklin. He ate and dressed sensibly. He was careful about his health. When it came to business, he analyzed situations and made decisions based on facts and figures. Much of his attention had already focused on electricity. In 1751, a comprehensive account of Franklin's electrical experiments was published in London. The Benjamin Franklin who returned to London in 1757 was a different person from the journeyman printer who had gone there more than 30 years before. William was in his late 20s now with a taste for adventure. At 16, he had tried to run away to sea. His father talked him out of that, but later arranged for him to accompany a military expedition to Canada. Now William was finally taking his first trip overseas. He hoped the rest of his ham- family would come along as well, but Debbie was afraid of the sea and would not cross it. Eventually, William and his father decided to go to London. He and William took many trips outside of London. On one they explored the ancestral home of the Franklins, seeing the place where Benjamin's father and grandfather were born. They also toured the Midlands in Scotland for three months in 1759. The latest war between England and France finally ended in 1763. The British had emerged as the victors, leaving the French on the losing side, and the terms of the peace treaty removed France as a power in the eastern part of North America. By the 1760s, many of the colonists were not as closely tied to England as their parents and grandparents had been. Since the colonists would benefit the most from their peace, the British naturally thought colonists should pay dearly for their good fortune. Amid all this controversy, Franklin returned to England in 1764. Tensions lessened some when the Stamp Act was repealed a few months later. But this repeal did not signal a fundamental charge in Parliament's thinking. In 1770, anger over the Townshead Acts led to their taxes being repealed on everything but tea. Nonetheless, ill feelings on both sides of the Atlantic continued to grow. Things only got worse after the Boston Tea Party of 1773. That incident started when three ships arrived in Boston filled with tea, the one item still being taxed after the repeal of the Townshead Acts. 
The Sons of Liberty wanted the Sibs to leave, but the governor, Thomas Hutchison, wasn't interested in their opinion. So the night of December 16th, a group of colonists dressed as Mohawk Indians boarded the ship and threw 95,000 pounds of tea into the harbor. When Franklin next went to speak before government officials, he was soundly criticized in a long and personal attack. Amid this political turmoil, Franklin received sad news from home. On December 19, 1774, his wife Debbie had died. The news saddened Franklin deeply. He cared for his wife both emotionally and practically, although he seemed to have no trouble with their long separations. Franklin finally left England in the late winter of 1775. Franklin arrived home from England on May 5th, 1775. While the six-week voyage had been uneventful, life in the colonies could not stay the same. On the night of April 18th, General Gates, the British commander in Boston, had sent troops out to capture ammunition and other colonial military supplies located in Concord. At the age of 69, Benjamin Franklin was the group's senior statesman. He was not the richest delegate, nor was he the tallest, the shortest, or the best looking, but he was the most famous. Franklin often reminded the delegates of his plan of union and the importance of sticking together. But even acting with a unified front, the colonies lacked the resources of their English enemies. On October 26, 1776, he sailed through France aboard a small sloop. Franklin arrived in France safely, but not in the best of health. He was well known in France as a scientist, particularly as the inventor of the lightning rod. Early in 1777, news arrived. General Washington and his forces were supposed to be on the run in the northeastern Pennsylvania, but in an unexpected move, Washington had crossed the Delaware River into New Jersey on a complex much in secret. The British General John Burgoyne commanded more than 6,000 troops that had come down from Canada and were now gathered near Albany. But these troops were not trained for wilderness fighting. They were prepared to fight in organized formations on open fields. On October 17th, after several negotiations, Burgoyne surrendered his men and supplies to the Continental Forces under the command of General Horatio Gates. As pleased Franklin was to have the peace treaties signed and ratified, he knew that not all dangers had passed. After a short visit in England where he had caught up with old friends whose company he had missed during the war, he boarded a ship for Philadelphia. Upon his arrival in September, Franklin was met with greetings from representatives of many organizations that he had helped to create use before. By the fall of 1788, Franklin realized that he would not be rebounding from his current decline. A new constitution is now established, he wrote in a letter, and has an appearance that promises permanency, but in the world nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Of death, at least, he was especially certain. In fact, he spent months of his last year in bed suffering from kidney stones. Benjamin Franklin died on April 17, 1790. 20,000 people came to pay their respects, far away in the biggest funeral Philadelphia had ever seen. Franklin's achievements were many, and no doubt he took pride in them all. In one of his last letters to a friend in England, Franklin wrote, God grant that not only the love of liberty, but a true knowledge of the rights of man may pervade all the nations on earth so that a philosopher may set his foot on its surface and say, this is my country.